hi students today i am going to deal the topic blood flow meters from the chapter blood pressure and flow measurement and therapeutic instruments i am going to deal the topic blood flow meters from the chapter blood pressure and flow measurement and therapeutic instruments learning objectives upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand the concepts of blood flow meter need for blood flow measurement electromagnetic blood flow meters construction and working of electromagnetic blood flow meters ultrasonic blood flow meters upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand the concepts of blood flow meter the need for blood flow measurement electromagnetic blood flow meter construction and working principle of electromagnetic blood flow meter ultrasonic blood flow meter construction and working principle of ultrasonic blood flow meter introduction blood flow is one of the important physiological parameters and the most difficult thing to measure accurately it is the parameter which is most difficult to measure accurately it is one of the, one of the important physiological parameter the average velocity of blood flow varies over a wide range depending on the diameter of the blood vessel the average velocities of blood flow vary over a wide range depending on the diameter of the blood vessel depending on the diameter of the blood vessel there are many techniques which are used for measuring the blood flow or blood velocity there are many techniques which are used for measuring the blood flow or blood velocity they are characterized into two basic types one is invasive and non invasive so blood flow measurement is characterized into two types invasive and non invasive invasive is where a surgery is needed non invasive just you can pierce through the screen surgery is not needed not needed so there are these uh, blood flow meters are characterized into two basic types invasive and non invasive need for blood flow meter inspection for block in blood flow blood flow meters are used to inspect the blocks in the blood flow in a blood vessel then they are used for testing artificial blood vessels during organ transplantation during the organs transplantation they are used for testing artificial blood vessels during organ transplantation and during fistula creation in dialysis where you are going to uh, pump pure blood and impure blood after uh, dialysis the pure blood is pumped into the body so you have a, you are going to create a fistula in your arm so during that creation also flow measurement is very very essential so it is used for inspection of blood blocks in the blood flow testing of artificial blood vessels during organ transplantation and during fistula creation in dialysis the typical values of blood flow are based upon the type of the blood vessel the flow rate varies okay even in the in iota total cross section is 3 to 5 cm square and blood velocity is 40 cm per second in iota the main blood vessel or vein where the cross sectional area is 3 to 5 cm square and blood velocity is 40 cm per second in the capillaries the total area of cross section is 4500 to 6000 cm square and blood velocity is 0.03 cm per second in the capillaries the flow velocity is very slow whereas in the iota it is very fast in the vena cava inferior and superior vena cava this is the major uh, vein that carries blood from the uh, body parts into the lungs iota is the one which carries blood from the lungs to the and it distributes to the body parts so 
the vena cava that is the inferior uh, superior vena cava the cross sectional area is 14 cm square and the velocity of blood in this region is 15 cm per second so based on the types of the blood vessels the flow rate of the blood is varying the flow rate of the blood is varying blood flow meters the most widely used blood flow meters are electromagnetic blood flow meters ultrasonic blood flow meters nmr blood flow meters laser blood flow meters these are the most widely used blood flow meters electromagnetic blood flow meters ultrasonic blood flow meters nmr blood flow meters and laser doppler blood flow meters laser doppler blood flow meters coming to the first first type of uh, blood flow meter the electromagnetic blood flow meter the electromagnetic blood flow meter it is uh, uh, electromagnetic flow meter is a volumetric type of flow meter which does not have any moving parts it doesn't have any moving parts and is ideal for waste water applications or any dirty liquid which is conductive or water based this is a volumetric type of blood flow meter electromagnetic blood flow meter it does not have any moving parts and ideal for waste water applications or any dirty liquid which is conductive or wa water based this uh, blood flow meter measures instantaneous pulsatile flow of blood pulsatile flow is nothing but flow with periodic variations so it measures instantaneous pulsatile flow of blood it is work it is working its working is based on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction to determine the flow of the liquid in the pipe or in the blood vessel so it works on the principle of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction this law states that the voltage induced in a conductor moving in a magnetic field is proportional to the velocity of that conductor okay the voltage indu induced across a conductor as it moves at right angles or as it moves at right angles through the magnetic field is proportional to the velocity of that conductor it is proportional to the velocity of the conductor the conductive blood is the moving conductor so you have the conductor the conductor is moving which is moving here in this case the blood is flowing so blood is the conductive conductor which is moving so the velocity induced is uh, the voltage induced in a conductor moving in a magnetic field is proportional to the velocity of the conductor that is the principle of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so this is your electromagnetic blood flow meter uh, you can see the figure it consists uh, uh, in this electromagnetic blood flow meter you can understand the construction of your electromagnetic blood flow meter uh, you have a permanent magnet north and south pole and you have the the uh, blood vessel flowing through the uh, blood vessel is there and the blood is allowed to flow through the flow, through the vessel and uh, the construction is uh, it is used to determine the flow of liquid in a pipe or uh, through a blood vessel so here you are considering the blood vessel a permanent magnet principle of electromagnetic blood flow meter as i told you it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction the faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction a, a permanent magnet or an electromagnet position around the blood vessel generates a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the fluid it generates a magnetic field uh, which uh, is perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the blood so voltage induced in this moving blood column is measured with stationary electrodes located on the opposite sides of the blood vessel and perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field so this method requires a blood vessel be exposed so that the flow head or the measuring probe can be put across it so you are going to so you are going to it is a invasive method so this method requires that the blood vessel must be exposed so that the flow head or the measuring probe can be put across it so 
this works on electromagnetic induction a permanent magnet which is positioned around the blood vessel generates a magnetic field per perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the blood so when it is uh, perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the blood because of the movement of the uh, blood through the vessel what happens uh, uh, an emf is induced perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field the emf the amount of emf generated depends upon the flow rate of the blood so this is your electromagnetic blood flow meter uh, diagram the electromagnetic blood flow meter you can observe uh, the induced emf is proportional to the magnetic flux density in tesla l is the length between the electrodes you have the electrodes as shown in the figure the electrodes and u is the instantaneous velocity of the blood so the induced emf is proportional to u into b into dl u into b into dl where b is the magnetic flux density produced by the magnetic field l is the length of the length between the electrodes and then u is the instantaneous velocity of the blood so an emf is induced which is proportional to the velocity of the blood it is proportional to the velocity of the blood so the electromagnetic flow transducer it is a tube of non magnetic material to ensure that magnetic flux does not bypass the flowing liquid and go into the walls of the tube you should remember in the construction the uh, outer tube the tube is non magnetic in nature tube of the non magnetic material to ensure that the magnetic flux does not bypass the flowing liquid and go into the walls of the types of electromagnetic flow meters basically all modern flow meters consists of generator of ac a probe assembly a series of capacitor coupled amplifiers a demodulator a dc amplifier and a suitable recording device it consists of a suitable recording device so when we see the types of electromagnetic uh, em flow meters are nothing but electromagnetic flow meters uh, basically all electromagnetic flow meters they consists of a generator ac a probe assembly a series of capacitance coupled amplifiers and a demodulator then a dc amplifier and a suitable recording device basing on the shape of the energy circuit waveforms for the uh electromagnets we have different basing on the shape of the energing uh, energing uh, current waveforms for the electromagnet we have two types of electromagnetic flow meters one is sine wave flow meters and other one is square wave flow meters so based on the shape of the ener energizing current uh, waveform for the electromagnet we have two types of electromagnetic flow meters two types the first one is your sine wave flow meter in the sine wave flow meter the probe magnet is energized with a sine wave whereas in the square wave the probe magnet is energized with a square wave and the induced voltage will also be sinusoid so the induced voltage you are energizing the probe with a sine wave and the induced voltage will also be sinusoidal since the flow of the blood acts as a secondary terminal of a transformer with respect to the probe magnet an additional artifact voltage induced is called transformer voltage this voltage is about 90 900 out of the phase which uh, with the or 90 degrees actually it is not 900 90 degrees out of phase with the original signal corresponding to the flow of the Uh, so a method for eliminating transformer voltage by using a gated amplifier it is possible you are going to use a gated amplifier to eliminate the phase shift to eliminate the phase difference so this the voltage is 90 degrees out of phase with the original signal corresponding to flow of blood so this type of instrument is also known as, known as gated sine wave flow meter why the gated sine wave flow meter is uh, additional artifact voltage is induced that is called transformer voltage and uh, this voltage is uh, produces a phase shift of 90 degrees out of phase with the original signal and uh, eliminating this can be done by using a gated amplifier that's why we we have the gated sine wave flow meter 
the probe magnet is when it is energized with a square wave and induced voltage is also square wave that type of flow meter is called sine wave electromagnetic flow meter it is easier to control magnitude and wave shape of the energizing circuit energizing current so you can easy you can easily control the magnitude and wave shape of the energizing current so separation of transformer voltage is easy separation of transformer voltage is easy in the case of square wave flow meters for the measurement action square wave is amplitude modulated by variation in the blood flow it is amplitude modulated by variation in the blood flow so this is your basic block diagram of a square wave flow meter square wave electromagnetic flow meter you have a, we can observe in the figure a permanent magnet is there the magnet contains a vessel uh, inside the magnet magnet is placed around the blood vessel and uh, the blood vessel is allowed blood is allowed to flow through the vessel now you have the Uh, the construction it consists of a power amplifier it consists of a, a pre amplifier a detector and a output stage filter and output stage so this is the block diagram of square wave amp uh, square wave type of flow meter the components of a square wave type um, flow meters are transducer it consists of a of an electromagnet a pair of electrodes are used electromagnet is a pair of electrodes electrodes may be in contact with either the flowing blood or outer surface of the blood vessel okay it called the transducer consists of an electromagnet a pair of electrodes are used and the electrodes may be in contact with the blood, either flowing blood or uh, or it will be in contact with the outer surface of the blood vessel then we have the pre amplifier the induced voltage pick up by the electrode is given to a low, low noise differential amplifier so the voltage is induced because of the flow of uh, uh, blood uh, flow of blood through the vessel and uh, the blood vessel is surrounded by electromagnetic field according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction an emf is induced and this voltage induced is picked up by the electrodes and it is given to a low noise differential amplifier through a capacitive coupling it must have a very high cmrr and input impedance so the pre amplifier must have common mode rejection ratio very high and high input impedance high input impedance then the next stage is your gating circuit it prevents to remove spurious voltages generated during magnetic current reversal okay it is it removes spurious voltages that are being generated during magnetic current reversal the gating action is controlled by the circuit which provides an excitation current to the electromagnet it provides an excitation current to the electromagnet we have the bandpass filter it is an active rc bandpass filter uh, which selectively passes through it the amplified square wave signal which selectively passes through the through it the amplified square wave signal peak response is kept at 400 hertz so the peak response is kept at 400 hertz then the detector a phase sense sensitive detector is used to recover the signal it also helps in rejection of interfering voltages at frequencies below the carrier frequency so you are using a phase sensitive detector which is used to recover the signal it also helps in the rejection of the interfering voltages at frequencies below the carrier frequency at frequencies below the carrier frequency so these are the various components of a square wave electromagnetic flow meter then coming to the topic of discussion of advantages and disadvantages of electromagnetic blood flow meters the advantages are minimum obstruction in the flow path yields minimum pressure drop if there are obstruction in the flow path if the if the obstructions are minimum then pressure drop is also minimum it can measure forward as well as reverse flow with equal accuracy 
so if the flow of blood is uh, uh, in one direction and if the flow of blood is in the it can measure both the forward and reverse flows also and the accuracy is equal then low maintenance cost because of no moving parts as i first in the beginning of the uh, discussion i have already told you it is having no moving parts and it can be used for corrosive or slurry fluid flows also so that is an advantage the advantages are minimum obstruction in the flow path yields minimum pressure drop and it can measure forward as well as reverse flow with equal accuracy and low maintenance cost because of non moving parts and corrosive or slurry fluid flow corrosive or slurry fluid flows it can be used for corrosive or slurry fluid flows also disadvantage the only disadvantage with this type of uh, electromagnetic blood flow meter is it requires electrical conductivity of the fluid the fluid must be electrical conductivity fluid it must conduct electricity that is the only disadvantage it requires electrical conductivity of the fluid so these are the advantages and disadvantages of electromagnetic blood flow meters electromagnetic blood flow meters have widespread applications they are used in pipelines they are used in refineries where you can uh, measure the flow rate of the flowing fluids you can measure the electromagnetic flow meters you are used in you are using them in different applications next topic of this discussion is ultrasonic blood flow meters ultrasonic blood flow meters the ultrasonic blood flow meter and ultrasonic flow meter is a type of uh, it is a type of flow meter that measures the velocity of a fluid with ultrasound to calculate the volume flow okay you are using the velocity of the fluid with ultrasound to calculate the volume flow using uh, use using ultrasonic transducers the flow meter can measure the average velocity along the path of an emitted beam of ultrasound you are going to measure the average velocity along the path of an emitted beam of ultrasound by averaging the difference in measured and transit time between the pulses of ultrasound propagating into and against the direction of the flow or by measuring the frequency shift from the doppler effect you can measure the velocity of the flow flowing fluid so ultrasonic flow meters in the ultrasonic flow meters the beam of ultrasonic energy is used ultrasound frequency is greater than 20 kilohertz in this method blood flow is measured in two different methods or two different ways the first one is the transit time method and the second one is the doppler type okay ultrasonic energy is used ultrasound frequency which is greater than 20 kilohertz in this method blood flow is measured uh blood flow is measured in two different ways using this method that is transit time method and doppler type transit time method pulsed beam is directed through a blood vessel at a shallow angle the transit time is measured transit time shortens when blood flows in the direction of the energy transmission and transmit time increases if the blood flows in the opposite direction of the energy transmission if it is in the same direction of the ultrasound that is being produced the blood flow is time is shorter transit time will be shortened if it is against the flow of blood then the transit time is increased so this is the diagram of an ultrasonic flow meter so you have the blood vessel and you have the transmitter and the receiver the skin surface so incident sound sound is produced by the transmitter it is allowed to pass through the blood vessel and it is reflected back again onto the receiver onto the receiver the second method is the doppler type method doppler shift flow velocity meters doppler shift flow velocity blood flow meters it is a non invasive method 
it is based on the analysis of echo signals from erythrocytes in the blood from the rbcs okay analysis of the echo signals so sound signals when they are made to fall on to the blood vessel an echo is produced in the rbcs the in incident ultrasound is scattered by the blood vessel and the scattered way is received by the second receiver the frequency shift of the scattered way gives idea about the velocity of the scatterers so it gives the idea about the velocity of the scatterers so you you can observe a frequency shift of, which can be observed there is a shift of the frequency in the incident ultrasound so the doppler frequency shift is a measure of size and direction of the flow velocity it is a measure of size and uh, direction of the flow velocity so doppler frequency shift is a measure of size and direction of the flow velocity so doppler shift low velocity meters it is a non invasive method it is based on the analysis of echo signals from the erythrocytes that is rbc in the blood the incident ultrasound is scattered by the uh, blood cells and sc and this scattered wave is received by the receiver the frequency shift of the scattered wave gives the idea of the velocity of the scatterers the doppler frequency shift is a measure, measure of the size and direction of the flow velocity so this is your block diagram of your doppler shift flow velocity meter we have the blood vessel rx is the uh, receiver and tx is the transmitter uh, the transmitter sends ultrasonic sounds and these sounds are received after passing through the blood vessel they are received by the receiver and they are further amplified and detector through the detector they go to the Uh, filtering circuit and you get an audio ampli you use an audio amplifier to amplify your signal and present your output after filtering through the low pass filter so the second method in is the range gated pulsed doppler flow meter range gated pulsed doppler flow meter Baker 1970 stated that recording blood flow using doppler shift are sometimes misleading and in our create sometimes using the um, doppler shift method they are sometimes they appear to be inaccurate and misleading these difficulties can be overcome if the ultrasonic sound is pulsed so the ultrasonic sound here is range gated pulsed doppler flow meter we are going to use the ultrasonic so source to be pulsed if the returning signal is range gated then the diameter and the velocity of the blood stream can be measured together you can measure the Uh, direction and diameter uh, uh, then the diameter and the velocity of the blood stream can measure together this is the block di block diagram of pulse doppler flow meter pulse doppler flow meter where you get the receive the signal from the transmitter and it is sent to the power amplifier through the pulse and uh, uh, and other parts then we have uh rx element that is receiver element receiver limiter from there it goes the signal goes to the phase detector we have a master master oscillator uh, the phase detector uh, volt uh, frequency master oscillator circuit is 4.5 to 5.5 megahertz and this signal is given to your a low pass filter and sample and amplifier okay so this is the flow measurement by using pulse doppler flow meter then your next part is your flow measurement by doppler imaging ultrasound doppler ultrasound is not only used for measurement of absolute value of the blood velocity and volume but it is also used to visualize the blood flow you can visualize the this is a an imaging flow measurement by doppler imaging not only you are going to listen to the sound and and uh, you can know the absolute value of the blood velocity by using some formulas and uh, knowing the volume but it is also helpful to visualize blood flow so the probe uh, probe this imaging equipment is mechanically coupled to the position resolver which gives electrical output so the probe in this imaging technique is 
mechanically it is mechanically coupled to a position resolver which gives electrical output imaging is done by moving the probe through the skin and developing a 3d image using a computer so imaging is done by moving the probe through the skin and developing a 3d image using a computer thus it is possible to construct anterior and posterior lateral and cross sectional scans of the blood vessels so you can uh, image this uh, output it can be done by using moving the probe through the skin and developing a 3d image by using a computer and it is also possible to construct anterior and posterior lateral and cross sectional scans of the blood vessel so your next figure is your flow measurement by doppler imaging you can see how the scanning image of your uh, internal part of your body uh, that is the blood vessels uh, the doppler image can be obtained so using this recording mean blood flow peak flow reverse peak flow etc of the cardiac cycle are possible using this recording what the, what does it mean it, you can find the mean blood flow you can find out the peak flow you can find out the reverse peak flow etc of cardiac cycle are possible so this method is also helpful for taking measurements from brain brain which is difficult to access this method the doppler method doppler pulse doppler or gated range gated pulse doppler i'm sorry it is not range gated it's flow measurement using doppler imaging it is helpful for taking measurements from the brain which is a difficult thing to access coming to the advantages of doppler flow meters doppler flow meters may be used where other meters don't work this is mostly used where other meters don't work this might be liquid slurries aerated liquids or liquids with some small or large amount of suspended solids so the advantages with the doppler flow meters are obstruct less flow can be installed outside the pipes and low flow cut off it is corrosion resistance and relatively low power consumption so doppler flow meters they obstruct the flow very low they can be installed outside the pipes and low flow cut off and corrosion resistant and relative low power consumption relatively low power consumption coming to the dis disadvantages of doppler flow meters is they need a sufficient number of reflecting particles in the medium on a continuous basis sufficient member number of reflecting particles are needed the particles must be large enough to provide sufficient good reflection their reflection is greater than lambda by 4 and the particles velocity of the particulate material must uh, must be velocity of the particulate material must be dif distinctly different from that of the liquid the sound velocity of the medium is directly included in the measurement result the particle velocity often differs noticeably from the velocity of the liquid that is velocity of the body blood flow so well, uh, these are the uh, disadvantages with this type of blood flow meter usually the ultrasonic field extends only in the peripheral flow that is why indication is heavily dependent on the profile the velocity needs to be far higher than the critical velocity at which the particles settle very long unimpeded in inlet runs 20 into d are needed to allow conclusion to be drawn from the flow rate so these are the dif different disadvantages of doppler blood flow meters applications of blood flow meters medical application measurements of blood flow absolute accuracy is not a requirement only good dynamic performance is required in medical applications uh, because which reproduces blood pulsation in the veins and arteries in great deal for diagnosis they are very useful for diagnosis purpose especially similar to an ecg the sensor pad is simply applied to the skin with coupling gel avoiding bleeding
so these are the uh, medical applications and they are used in measurement of flow of slurries example is iron ore this is a non uh, med medicinal application by its very nature particle concentration is high the sound velocity of the particles also differs sufficiently from that of the carrier medium the, so the flow meter is often used to provide a signal when the well, when voltage drops below the critical level the penetration depth of the ultrasonic beam which depends on the concentration and also flow profile tends to cause considerable errors for measurement considerable errors for measurement then benefits with ultrasonic flow meters the benefits are ultrasonic flow meters are obstruction less flow meters pressure drop equals to an equivalent length of straight pipe they are unaffected by changes in the temperature density or viscosity bidirectional flow cap capability they have corrosion resistance and accuracy about 1% of the flow rate and relative low power consumption so these are the advantages or benefits of ultrasonic flow meters they are obstruction less free and pressure drop equal to an equivalent length of straight pipe and they are unaffected by changes in the temperature and density or viscosity bidirectional flow capability and corrosion resistant and accuracy at about 1% of flow rate and relatively low power consumption and the limitations are the operating principle for ultrasonic flow meter requires reliability high frequency sound transmitted across the pulse across the pipe so its operation requires reliability and high frequency sound transmitted across the pipe liquid slurries with excess solids or with entrained gases may may block the ultrasonic pulses so the liquids must be clear and they must not have any entrained gases ultrasonic flow meters are not recommended for primary sludge mixed liquors aerobically digested sludge resolved air flotations thickened sludge and its liquid phase septic sludge and activated carbon sludge these are the areas where we cannot recommend ultrasonic flow meters and the liquids with entrained gases cannot be measured reliably the liquids which are having entrained gases that is gases uh, where we have small air bubbles or any gas entrapped with within the uh, meter then you, you cannot it uh, liquids with entrapped entrailed gases cannot be measured reliably so to summarize our topic of discussion today we have studied about blood flow meters blood flow meters and why we measure the uh, blood flow measurement is very essential blood flow meters uh, blood flow is one of the psychological physiological parameters and the most difficult to measure accurately the measuring techniques are classified into two types invasive and non invasive uh, the need for blood flow flow measurement is inspection for block in blood flows and testing artificial blood vessels and during fistula creation in dialysis and uh, there are different methods uh, most commonly used methods widely used methods are ultrasonic blood flow meters uh, and uh, electromagnetic blood flow meters nmr blood flow meters and laser doppler blood flow meters uh, the principle of operation of uh, ultra electromagnetic blood flow meter is the voltage induced across the conductor uh, if it moves perpendicular to the magnetic field is proportional to the velocity of the conductor so it works on the principle of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction and uh, this uh, this electromagnetic blood flow meter is a volumetric type of blood flow meter uh, it works on faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction uh, which uh, to determine the flow of the liquid in the vessel the voltage induced in the conductor moving in a magnetic field the conductor is the blood here in this case it is moving in a magnetic field proportional to the velocity of the conductor so when this happens what happens an emf is induced a voltage is induced in the in the in the blood vessel and this voltage is proportional to by magnetic flux density length of the uh, electrodes length between the electrodes and the instantaneous value of, of velocity of the blood velocity of the blood so electromagnetic flow transducer is a tube of non magnetic material it is a tube of non magnetic material uh, we have different components of uh, ultra uh, 
components of uh, electromagnetic blood flow meters. Again, they are classified into two types that is based upon the uh, current energizing waveform, sine wave flow meters and square wave flow meters. Okay, and the advantages of this uh, electromagnetic blood flow meters is minimum obstruction to flow path yields minimum pressure drop and it can be used to measure uh, reverse flow with equal accuracy, low maintenance cost because of no moving parts and corrosive or slurry fluid flows it can be used. And the, the only disadvantage is it requires an electrical conductivity of the fluid, electrical conductivity of the fluid is necessary. When we come to the case of ultrasonic uh, blood flow meters, it makes use of a beam of ultrasonic energy, uh, ultrasonic frequency is greater than 20 kilohertz and uh, there are two methods, the transit method and the Doppler type method, the pulsed beam is directed through a uh, blood vessel at a shallow angle, the transit time is measured, the transit time shortens when the blood flows in the direction of the energy transmission and transit tri time increases if the blood flows in the opposite direction of the energy transmission. The second method is the Doppler shift method which is a, a non-invasive method. The instant ultrasound is scattered uh, by the blood cells and scattered wave is received by the second receiver. The frequency shift of the scattered wave gives idea about the velocity of the scatterers. So, these are the types of, uh, this is a, um, this is the working principle of Doppler shift uh, flow velocity meters. Doppler shift flow velocity meters and uh, we have the advantages of this meters are uh, they, they can be they are obstructionless flow meters they can be installed outside the pipe and they have low flow cost cutoff corrosion resistance and relatively low power consumption and disadvantages the they must uh, need a sufficient number of reflecting particles in the medium. The particles must be large enough and the sound velocity of the particles uh, materials must be distinctly different from that of the liquids and the sound velocity of the medium is directly included in the measurement res results. So, particle velocity often noticeable from the velocity of the liquid. Uh, then uh, it needs to be far higher than the critical velocity at which particles settle. The applications are they are used in medical applications, they are used in measurement of flow of flurries, slurries, flow of slurries. Then uh, the benefits of ultrasonic flow meters are they are obstructionless flow, they pressure drop equal to the equivalent length of the straight pipe and uh, bidirectional flow capability is possible unaffected by changes in temperature, density or viscosity, their corrosion resistance and uh, uh, accuracy about 1% of the flow rate and relatively low power consumption is possible in this ultrasonic flow meters. The limitations are ultrasonic flow meters, uh, uh, they require relatively high frequency sound transmitting across, sound transmitted across the pipe. Liquid slurries with excessive solids or with entrained gases may block the ultrasonic pulses and they are not recommended for primary sludge, mixed liquors. Arabically digested sludge, dissolved air flotation, thickened sludges and its uh, liquid phase, septic sludges and activated carbon sludges. Liquids with entrained gases can be, cannot be measured reliably. So, these are the disadvantages or the limitations with ultrasonic flow meters. So, with this I would like to end my presentation on blood flow meters and the types that is electromagnetic blood flow meter and ultrasonic blood flow meters. Thank you.